Well, that was a thing when people would say that when the original Tomb Raider came out, is that, oh, well, people get to look at a Lara Croft's butt instead of Mario's. I don't remember a lot of people who played Super Mario who weren't attracted to men saying, oh, I could not enjoy this game enough. Could not get into Super Mario 64 because <laughs> I'm just not into plumber butt. When games give you the option to play between uh, a male or female character, which do we choose? So I wanted to present the question to the both of you and find out and pick your brains and find out which way you guys go. Well, I always play as a woman if I have the opportunity to do so. Um, just because in games where you don't get to choose, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time the option is to play as a man. And I just like the opportunity to play as a woman if I, if I have the option. If I'm gonna play through a story, I feel like I wanna make choices as myself. So I wanna play closely, like, as close as I can get to a character that is like myself, so I can really like project myself into the game, basically. I'm playing, I flip-flop, because I, I like the idea of being able to choose. I don't go crazy with character customization, because I, like, I want to get into actually playing the game. In Far Cry, you could choose ethnicity, and one of the, one of the options was play as, a guy looks kind of Japanese, and so I was like, okay, well, I've not played as a Japanese-looking person in a game before, so let me try that. Some of it is like, I'm, I'm, I want to see what is it like to play as somebody who's different than me. I recognize that most of the time games give me cho choices that are more like who I am, play as a white guy. But uh, some, yeah, sometimes I, I want to be, okay, I want to be somewhat different than me. Sometimes I'm like, I want to be a little more than me, and I, I kind of go back and forth. Yeah, I, I'm actually, uh, I, I'm the same way. I, I'll kind of flip-flop depending on what game it is, but for the most part, I have the opposite effect where I'm, I'm trying to make my character look almost exactly like me. So I, I spend way too much time in the character creator mode. I gotta get the right shade of like my, my skin color. I gotta get like the right sort of facial hair. You know, it so feels the fun. Female hair options in Far Cry 5 blow. Like yeah. they're terrible. If you're playing as a black woman, as so often happens in games where you have a character creator, um, there's like five hairstyles and only one of them is curly and it's like a close cropped fro. I usually do try to make a black woman, but I end up trying to make Rihanna because <laughs> it's more likely that they'll have hairstyles that Rihanna has had in her career than hairstyles that I have had in my lifetime. What's interesting about Bioware games though is that once you pick your gender, the game really does respect the gender and sexuality of your characters. Like I've played Dragon Age Inquisition now three times and I played as a woman every single time, but I think like I'm going to play as a man finally because I want to experience Dorian's romance. Dorian's a homosexual male character and he won't romance women, like at all. Even in like fighting games, I try to play women as often as possible. I was gonna bring that up. Like yeah. in competitive games, I always try to play as, uh, as the female characters, because like in Overwatch, there's like, it's pretty diverse and it's, it's like, ni there's a nice array of like different kind of characters and the only characters I play happen to be women. So I, I mean Zarya, Farah, Symmetra. Is that because they're women? You think no. or because of their skill sets well, that it, it just happens to it, be? That, it, I think it's more so that thing, but I, I also like, I find myself just into their like character designs and stuff. I love the way Zarya looks. I love how like like powerful she is. But the cool thing about Overwatch is when I when I when I'm playing with friends, I don't and I don't know who like strangers are, like whether they're enemies or my, or, or the teammates with like randos. I'll say like, oh, she got her ultimate, or like, look at her whatever. And I, I like it sort of changes the way I, I speak about the on-screen characters, which I think is kind of cool. Like I, I don't think I yeah. can't think of besides like Street Fighter and stuff. I don't yeah. really think, think about it. She plays Chun Li then in Street Fighter. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, bumping some Nicki Minaj. <laughs> when fighting games, I find the characters I like playing often end up being women regardless because I like playing, you know, really fast characters with tiny little hitboxes that can go in and out very, very quickly. And I, I do have this like bias for playing as characters that I perceive as having like good character designs, which for me means like cute, you know, like diva in Overwatch is the one I gravitated to because she's adorable and like I want to feel cute and like I want to have a giant mech. That sounds great. I think about that, like how much am I looking for the character to be me? How much do I view them as an extension of myself? And how much do I view them as an avatar? So I've gone back and forth over people talking about, oh, there should be a female version of Link in Zelda. Cause I'm like, I don't think that people ask for there to be a female version of Nathan Drake, maybe because he's the male version of Lara Croft. <laughs> but people kind of accept those as like, 
proscribed characters already. In video games where like you're being cast as a character, a specific character, I do really seek that kind of specificity if I'm going to be playing a male character in a game. You know, I don't mind playing as Nathan Drake because he's Nathan Drake. I'm as much watching him throughout the narrative as I am playing as him. Um, but with Link, I mean, he originated as the literal link between the player and the world. So he was like totally a blank slate and it was designed to be a blank slate. Too, so yeah. It wasn't much of a, right. But if you play Breath of the Wild, it doesn't make a difference either way, like yeah. if Link was a male or you know, a man or a woman. I mean, in that game, I would rather play a Zelda who has like a very defined character in that game and has like an interesting story arc, much more interesting than Link's. But the game itself, you know, you could be playing as a stick figure and a genderless orb, and it would still be exactly as fun as it is. Nintendo themselves, or maybe Tecmo, threw a monkey wrench in this by saying, okay, we actually will create a female version of Link. I wonder what if I had that option, if I would have done that. I mean, I think I would have. I, I think I, I only right? didn't, because yeah, it's yeah. just something new, something that would feel fresher. And like then it becomes this like, you know, queer, weird queer love story with, you know, this princess that's locked away in the castle. And that would be like a very fun, yeah. unusual thing that Nintendo would do. And it, I think it would come off as really sweet and like very earnest. All of the Zelda games, despite there being a freaky Zelda timeline, they are their own centralized universes. Yeah. So it, it, these incarnations of Link do not really have any connection to each other. I, I like it when the games give choice. I think it would be good to see, you know, games just continue to give choice as much as possible. But I also would like to see some risk taking at times where a game just says, hey, you know, just because we decided to, just because it's different, just because it's a change from what our franchise has done before, or just because like there's a million games that already have you playing as a guy will have you play as a girl. And I probably do like think a little more fondly of a game taking that obvious chance when it's saying, okay, we're gonna have you play as somebody other than the, the type. For me, ultimately, the gameplay still, you know, is the true arbiter of whether I like the game or not. But if a game is gonna let me be in the shoes of somebody else, I'm often interested in taking up that opportunity seeing what, you know, seeing how that plays out. I really enjoyed playing Final Fantasy XV because it felt like that story was specifically about this male group of friends and male friendships specifically. And so I felt like my I was being enriched by learning about an experience that I wouldn't have had had I not played the game. But like, if you're gonna give me a choice, if it's otherwise arbitrary, I would prefer to have a choice because I'd rather play as a woman.